Posey Gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about melodies. Now, in beat writing, melodies are not always a forefront. In fact, they're often not. A lot of times you're creating a bed to put a melody, to put a vocalist. You might introduce some small melodic elements in the background, but they're not always the melody. So I'm going to show you a piece where I have a melody going. And there, there are definitely beats that do, but you have to be careful on how you construct it together. If your beat's going to be instrumental, melody can play a bigger role than if it's going to have some vocals on it. You're going to want to leave a hole somewhere so the vocalist can do things. Unless you're one of those people that likes to get like sort of complicated, then you can do that. So I'm going to show you a, a couple examples of melody. And so you can have you can have melodies that state themes. And a melody, let's first off, a melody is an independent idea, is what we're going to look at it as for this. So you have an independent idea, and it is the thing that grabs your attention. And as the melody develops, it will change its idea and its form. There's monophonic writing, where you write for one idea, then you have polyphonic writing where you have multiple ideas and the rule is the ideas must be independent. And there's actually, if you want to get into like fugal writing, which has polyphonic writing in it, then you want to be careful because if you do certain moves, then the voices will become too aligned. Like if you write um, parallel octaves, those voices will sound unified, like they're part of the same idea. That's against the rules if you want your melodies to sound independent. So there's all these extra rules that you have to know for polyphonic writing versus monophonic writing. And then we can get into counterpoint and there's sort of see the in-betweens between these, but that's getting a little academic. So we're going to step away from that side of it. I talk about things of this nature in melodic writing in the How to Make Big Room series, if you for like overcoming writer's block and stuff, as well as the MIDI Music Theory series. So you can go check that, those out. Um, so what we're going to look at is melodies can state themes and ideas and they can be developed and changed. So you could have a melody that's like da na 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 and then you could use that melody in the flutes at the beginning of your composition and then maybe on later on the clarinets have something similar but now it's like da na 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 da na na da da na 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 like it's a little bit different. And then later on the trumpets repeat what the flutes had earlier and you begin to develop it and you change phrases a little bit showing the listener all the various ways they can experience this melody. If you look up variations, um, piano variations on melodies, maybe look up some stuff by like Mozart or whatever, you'll find several where they experiment with ornamentation and creating a bass melody and then using that as the hotbed for a new melodic creation. So you have theme stating melodies, which is probably what you're going to be using. Uh, but you can also have transportation melody. So a melody is instead of serving the purpose of establishing a theme, it's going to be something that serves the purpose of taking you from point A to point B. And you can think of like solos. Solos oftentimes are transportation melodies. The soloist is going to take you from the beginning of one section into the beginning of another section. And so I have here an example of a transportation melody. And I also have one more type of melody I'm going to show you. This is my track, Get Up. If you're dying to hear it, you can just go look it up and find it. I'm not going to play for you the whole thing. And then we also have over here, we have a melody that's comprised of many different sounds. So we have singable melodies and we have not singable melodies. Dubstep has a lot of stuff that's not singable melodies. And a lot of times it might be rhythm, more rhythm based than melodic based. So there's, a, there's definitely a blurry line there. A thing that makes a melody good is it has to have an element of expectation and an element of unexpectation. So you expect something to happen, and then a good melody will do that, and it will follow some general rules that will allow you to expect certain qualities, but then it will be unexpected in other ways. And the unexpectedness is the thing that makes you go, oh, this sounds cool. Like, I didn't think of doing that. Something about it is just mystical. It could be the sound of the melody, and we're going to leave sound out of it, uh, for this particular case, but it could totally be the sound or most more often than not It's gonna be the harmonic choices in the directions they went um, It's one of the things that makes improvising uh, so fun. So here I'm gonna give you an example of a melody real quick just this beginning bass line So you see, there's our melody. And our melody is comprised of a couple pieces. We're only going to look at the basic ones. So we have an eight-bar melody, and it's composed of four-bar phrases. So here's a phrase, here's a phrase. So this by itself is an independent idea, but it's not a sentence. So 
if we're going to get more into the definition of what a melody is, a, a melody is basically a musical sentence. And so a phrase by itself is not enough to become a melody. And you can break down the phrase into motifs. And I have a motif in this piece. A motif is like a small theme. And so if we have something that goes, da, na, 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 let's just say that that's our theme. And I put it in various voices. Like you hear the clarinets do it. And then while something else playing, you hear trumpets like toss that in. And so that would be considered a motif. It's not big enough to be a phrase or a melody, but it's a theme that reiterates throughout your piece. A phrase is something that's like half a melody. Like it sounds complete by itself, but not quite done. And this would be an example of one of those. So you see, we're not done. It's like, da -na -na -na. I'm like, okay, we, we've said the first half of our sentence. See, that would be like, oh, there's a phrase, but you didn't finish the sentence. And so you can think of it sort of like that. So we, have, we can say phrases and sentences, but we need to finish our sentences. And that's what melody is, what makes a good melody. So one thing that, one other thing, quick note, melodies you can use, and I cover this in the mini music theory series, you can use different tools like appoggiaturas and so forth to derive more interesting melodies. So you write down something basic that follows your chords, or in this case, I wrote my melody first and then derived the chords around it. But you can write out something and then you can use melodic tools to make it more interesting. So you don't always have to write this crazy thing from your head right off the get-go. Maybe you write something that's a lot more basic and then you make it a little more interesting until you find something that you like. So that's like similar to you play it on the piano and you say, well, what if I did this here? And then you change it a little bit and you're like, oh, I like that more. So that's the one you're gonna write down. A melody should have a clear focal point. This is just, just a good tip uh, generally. Not always, but usually it will have a clear focal point if you're going to take a theory class, it's going to be a requirement for a good melody. And it should have clear contour, but not boring contour. Contour is the shape of your melody. So you see how we go up a little bit, like, whoa, we go up and then we go down. And then we go, we have this leap. Leaps are, there are rules about leaps, but we're not going to bother with those rules right now um, for singable melodies. So you can have singable melodies and non-singable melodies. Dubstep has a lot of stuff that's not singable. Um, if you're going to write a four-part thing for a choir, four part writing, then you're going to need to write singable melodies. And so there'll be rules about how far you can leap and stuff like that. So we have these leaps, but we go up a bit and then we go up and down. So we have a general contour here. We vary the contour. We have this up, down, and then down again. So that's the contour of our melody. You don't want it to be something that's like, da -na 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 -na. like it can be interesting if used correctly, but by itself, it's a kind of a boring phrase. It's very simple. It's very predictable, but is does it have elements of expectation? It has elements of expectation, but is it unexpected enough to be interesting? Maybe you'll make the sound or use some other element to make it more interesting, like the rhythm. Da -na 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 -na. Like that rest was like, oh, I didn't expect that. And it made you sort of on edge. Like you're like, oh, what is he going to finish the phrase? That kind of, you know, makes you almost think of questions, but faster than you can like consciously realize. It's why you enjoy listening to music. You're like, oh, oh, ooh, oh, ooh, you know, that kind of a thing. Okay, so that was kind of weird. But then we need a clear focal point. So that's the high point in our melody. So we only, so you see this one only has one. So this fits fine, which is great, dandy. Uh, if you have the things, let's say I ended my melody at this, at these notes. Well, then there would be no clear focal point and it would, it would make our contour less interesting. It's mostly for contour is the reason why this is so pleasing. So that's another general rule. So that's a little bit about melodies there. This melody serves eventually to become part of a background element and it also serves as a theme and a bed to derive smaller themes out of. I'm not gonna do dive into everything that happens in this particular track, but now I'm going to show you an example of a transportation melody. So I have this this one. It's now this is a lot more advanced. So I'm sorry for getting more advanced on you. But we're not looking at making this. We're looking at the ideas that make this thing work. Because you could write complicated stuff all day, but if you don't understand these ideas, then it, it just won't work. So in your beats, you may consider using one of these occasionally. And that is here I have a melody and melodies generally serve to outline the key you're in. So they, they serve to use the same notes so that the listener has a clearly rooted position. And so here I'm moving around in the key and making something sort of interesting. We skip over here.
it's repeating right now, but it actually continues on over here and we develop it more and more and more. And I'm jumping around in the key. I'm using harmony to create interesting chords as we go. And as, so this would be considered a counter melody of sorts. So it's countering the melody that happened before, which has now sort of become the bass line. And it takes us into the drop in a very smooth way. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it from right here in three, two, one. <laughs> See away we go, and we're gonna talk about uh, the melody ideas actually in the in the drop the second drop here, but we see that like you you're paying attention to that melody like it's really compelling. Lots going on these rests and the movement through all the chords. It's like whoa, I see what's we're moving up, we're moving down. Oh, was there a note there? Is, is, was that a completed phrase? Like all these things go through your head, but not like obviously not like that. But they're like what make it so that you're just like man, this thing is cool like. It's jiving. We got some jiving going on here. And so as we develop this and go through here, I've taken you from here all the way to the drop and eventually it becomes the riser and just drops us right into the drop. So that's a transportation melody. You can get more complicated or less complicated. It does not have to be this way. I, I got quite, I had a little too much fun with that. So now let's go over here to a melody that uses many sounds to form one melody. These are non-singable melodies, and I'll just go ahead and play for you a little bit of this. It's a little loud, so three, two, one. <laughs> So you get the idea, like we're like, whoa, we are going somewhere. And this is more, we could get into like drop theory and stuff, but we're looking at beats mostly. And uh, most people, they wouldn't call this a beat. They'd call this like a dubstep track. So what we're gonna do is you see here, all I wanna point out is that we have a whole bunch of sounds, but they're coming together to form one idea. And these sorts of things take a really long time because there's a lot of sounds. You got to pick your sounds. You got to make them all fit together. You got to come up with an idea. You got to choose the sounds, which can, oh man. And these were mostly created. I'm, I think I created every one of these sounds. I'm not sure if I made, I think the, the massive, doo -doo -doo -doo, those sorts of sounds were lasers that I had made previously um, from somewhere else. Yeah, because there's not a whole lot going on, but let's see here. I'm pretty sure. I can't remember. It's been so long. But I typically make all my sounds like just right in the track. It's all MIDI and stuff. There's Now, these are resampled basses from Harmer that I was messing with, and I used them over here. So that's why these are in audio form. But you get the idea. So we have many sounds being used to form one melody. You will typically do this through the use of syncopation in a track. So like one sound will go and then another sound will go. And when they combine together, they form this larger idea. And that's what that is. And so those can be used to state themes and take you somewhere. And they're very powerful tools for composition. And the drop, they are the tool pretty much. 
So that's a little bit about melodies. Hopefully I informed you in some ways that are useful. We're going to go over techniques to overcome and overcome writer's block and writing melodies a little bit later on. They're, they're mostly the same techniques used in the, the Learn to Make Big Room series. So you can go there if you're stuck or you want that info now. And I highly recommend if you want more of the details on making melodies, learning the melodic tools that are used for melody creation. That's covered in the MIDI music theory. They're, they're covered in concepts. I think they're like video 70 to 80. So that's that. My challenge to you is to make a beat with a cool melody and post it down below with an explanation of what kind of a melody you're using. Is it a theme melody? Is it a transportation melody? Is it, well, that's, that's pretty much those. If you can think of another type of melody, go ahead, list it below. I'm sure I've missed a couple. Because you can have a whole bunch of different purposes with these things. And list what instruments are using your melody. And if that instrument maintains the melody the whole time. Or moves into the background to give way to some other sound. Like does it go from melody to a focus on rhythm? What happens? I want this information. Because if you just post tracks down there. I will block your post. Because I don't care. I want I want to see what the exercise that you did. Because that's what matters. Is the learning, the learning and becoming better at composition. This isn't a, a promotional thing. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe, support me on Patreon, and have a blessed day.